Welcome everyone. Today on Disturbing Minds, I'm going to talk about a really scary movie called Veronica. It's a Spanish horror film that Netflix says is the scariest movie ever made. It's inspired by real life events. The story takes place in Madrid in 1991, on Sunday night with a call to the police, a girl calls in, worried about her brother Antonio. When the police get to the house, they see a scared woman rushing to two frightened kids. They learn that there were two more kids upstairs so they head upstairs, but what they find really shook them to their core. The story goes back three days earlier, to June 12, 1991, when Veronica, a responsible sister, helps her siblings get ready for school. Her dad was dead, and her mom works late at a bar, so she looks after her siblings. Her sister asks her to bring some film negatives for a class as they will look at a clips through the negative film. Veronica goes to her mom's room to get them, but something strange happens when she sees her dead dad's photo. Her mom, still half awake, asks if she's alright, and she says yes. In class, the nun teacher talks about how in some ancient cultures, people believed that solar eclipses were a time for sacrifices. Just as she finishes, the bell rings, and everyone heads out to see the eclipse. But Veronica and her friends sneak away from everyone. They have a different plan, they want to use a Ouija board to try to contact Veronica's dad and their friend's boyfriend who died recently in an accident. The three friends go to the creepy basement. Veronica takes out a book about the occult and her dad's picture and try to contact his spirit. As the eclipse begins outside, they start the seance. They ask if there's a spirit with them, and the glass they're using starts moving, which means there might be a spirit present. They ask if it's Veronica's dad who wants to talk. The other two friends want to be sure, so they ask again who it is. As the eclipse begins to cast its shadow, the glass moves again. The three friends feel a chill, but they dismiss it, thinking one of them is pushing the glass. But then it moves so fast that it stops suddenly, burning Veronica's friend's finger. As the eclipse progresses, Veronica seems strangely unaffected, almost distant. Suddenly, as the eclipse reaches its peak, the glass shatters, and they all scream. Meanwhile, Veronica's finger starts bleeding and blood drops on the sun symbol on the board, and then, in the chaos, one of Veronica's friends accidentally knocks over a candle, setting the Ouija board on fire. When they find Veronica on the floor, she's saying something uncontrollably. Her friend leans in to listen, but whatever Veronica says scares her friend. Then Veronica screams, causing the basement lights to shatter. Veronica faints. Later, she wakes up in the infirmary, and the nurse notices she hasn't had her period yet, suggesting she might be iron deficient. Veronica decides to leave and heads towards the exit, intending to go home. However, her sister notices a blind nun staring at Veronica. When they arrive home, strange things start happening. Notice that Veronica seems frozen and unable to eat her food, as if something is holding her back. Her frightened sibling accidentally spills the milk, which snaps Veronica back to her senses, and she wipes her mouth. Strange things start to occur in the house. Veronica begins hearing weird noises and notices a mysterious bruise on her shoulder, while she's washing her towel. Several hours later, Veronica is bathing her brother Antonio, playing their favorite song, Centella. Suddenly, she hears a crash outside the bathroom, assuming it's caused by her other siblings. Then, she hears a loud noise from her bedroom and goes to investigate. As she steps outside, she notices the chandelier in the living room flickering. Suddenly, the door closes on its own. Veronica hears Antonio scream, and when the door finally opens, she finds him burned from extremely hot water coming out of the faucet. Veronica apologizes, but Antonio reassures her it's not her fault. Feeling distressed, Veronica retreats to her bed. As viewers, we clearly see a shadow lurking inside Veronica's room, watching her. Later, while washing the dishes, Veronica notices a glass on the sink. Just as she's about to touch it, the creepy song, Centella, starts playing on the TV. Anxious, Veronica approaches the TV to turn it off, unaware that something unseen is silently following her. Eventually, Veronica heads to her bedroom and cautiously moves her bag into the cabinet. Strangely, she notices her siblings, cowering in fear inside. Moments later, Veronica hears someone calling her. It's her deceased father, naked and slowly approaching her. Nervously, she responds and backs away, trying to confirm if it's really her father. To her dismay, monstrous burn arms grab Veronica and pull her towards her bed. Her father's form transforms into a terrifying evil spirit, reaching towards her with an open mouth. Friday morning arrives, June 13, 1991, and Veronica wakes up from what was just a nightmare, but it leaves her breathing heavily with a sense of foreboding. Later, in class, a discussion about a story ends with her teacher warning that nobody escapes the consequences of blurring the line between reality and fantasy. Unfortunately, Veronica's friends start avoiding her. With yesterday's terrifying memories fresh in her mind and a strong desire to uncover the truth, Veronica returns to the basement where the seance occurred. To her astonishment, a blind nun speaks from the corner. Known as the Death Sister, she reveals that Veronica's body is inhabited by an evil spirit. It wasn't Veronica's father who answered her call. Instead, it's a malevolent entity seeking the sacrifice of an innocent. The nun attempts to expel the spirit from Veronica's body, but it proves to be too powerful, and she fails. She explains to Veronica that she must complete what she started. 
When someone calls a spirit with the Ouija board, they must finish the process to return the spirit back to the board. Otherwise, the spirit will haunt everyone and become trapped in the human world. Veronica and her friends had left the process unfinished. The nun also advises Veronica to protect her brother Antonio. Now aware of the devil's presence, Veronica creates protective symbols on papers and tapes them around the house to shield her siblings from the evil spirit. Later that evening, she glimpses a dark figure in her neighbor's house, frightening her enough to rush to her sibling's room. Veronica finds her siblings asleep, but she notices their toy lights flashing red and blue. She also the shadowy figure extends its arms and burns all the papers with protection symbols. Suddenly, she sees a shadow through the wall, choking her sibling. The devil vanishes, and Veronica wakes her sibling. She explains to her confused siblings that there's an intruder in the house trying to harm them. Soon after, Veronica gathers her siblings in the living room to sleep together, ensuring she can protect them from the devil. As Veronica wakes up from her brief nap, she cautiously walks through the hallway and catches sight of numerous sinister figures. Her siblings notice her distress as a shadow approaches the closed door. Veronica holds up a holy cross, and the shadow opens the door. It's their mother, returning from her night shift. She scolds Veronica for engaging in superstitions that might frighten her siblings, unaware of Veronica's true ordeal. While asleep, Veronica experiences a nightmare where her siblings are choking her, causing her to bleed. Suddenly awakening, Veronica discovers blood spots on her bed. It's her first period. She hurriedly scrubs the mattress to remove the stains, only to find a burnt mark shaped like a symbol when she lifts the mattress. Checking her siblings' mattresses, she finds similar burnt marks and symbols, filling her with dread. Despite it being Saturday, Veronica heads to the basement to seek answers from the nun. She asks how to stop it, but the nun explains that God isn't involved, so crosses and amulets won't work. Veronica must perform the same rituals that summon the spirit and destroy its pathway. The nun reveals that, like Veronica, she too used to see shadowy figures when she was young. That's why the nun herself had blinded her eyes, but her efforts were in vain as she still sees them. The nun advises Veronica to complete the seance and never end it without saying goodbye, or the spirit will linger. This means she has to perform the seance again to reopen the pathway for the devil to return to where it came from. With this possible solution in mind, Veronica rushes to her friend's party to ask for help and perform the seance again. However, they refuse, and her friend reveals that Veronica had whispered in her ear during the first seance that she would die in five days. The weight of this revelation crushes Veronica as she realizes there's no turning back. Desperate, she goes to her mother's diner to ask if she can close the shop and be with them instead. Despite her mother's busy schedule and promise to take them to the park the next day, she refuses due to the hectic restaurant rush. As tension mounts on this late rainy night, Veronica devises a plan to perform the seance, this time with her two siblings. Meanwhile, her brother Antonio's task is to draw protection symbols on the walls. However, the evil spirit manipulates the papers and Antonio draws different symbols, attracting more malevolent entities to their house. Shortly after, Veronica leads the seance, following the instructions of the occult encyclopedia. They begin by asking if the spirit is present, and the glass moves. Ignoring the nun's advice, Veronica insists they are there to bid farewell to the spirit and tells it to leave, but the glass indicates no. Determined, she commands the spirit to depart, instructing her siblings to do the same. The Veronica reads from the book and discovers they need to sing a mantra to properly end the seance. The three start singing Centella, as an ominous feeling envelopes them. Their voices lower, but Veronica urges them to continue. Suddenly, one of the doors slowly closes, followed by loud banging echoing through the room. The siblings are too frightened to continue singing. Suddenly, the door bursts open, the candles extinguish, and the Ouija board breaks. Within moments, the glass rolls out of the room, leading Veronica to follow it slowly. The glass knocks on her bedroom door before guiding her to the mattress. Veronica switches on her flashlight and inspects the burned mattress, only for the creature to grab her hand. The Veronica sibling manages to escape and rushes into the hallway as the lights go out. They regroup with their siblings and call for emergency help. As the Veronica sibling cries out for police help, she sees the innocent Antonio heading towards the door, only to be grabbed by the burned monster. Frantically, she follows Antonio into the bathroom. She quickly picks up her brother and urges her sister to hurry downstairs, as the devil continues to linger around them. Meanwhile, their mother notices the police cars heading towards their place and rushes outside. As the siblings attempt to leave, only the sisters manage to make it out. Veronica realizes the devil is toying with her when she discovers that Antonio wasn't in her arms. It's just an illusion. Ignoring her fear, she returns inside the house to find Cordo, breaking things along her path. She locates him in the bathtub, but when Veronica tells him to come with her, Antonio refuses. Veronica then sees a silhouette resembling her own in the mirror behind her. It dawns on her that the evil spirit had taken over her body and attacked her siblings. It was her all along. Her body is now possessed by the spirit. She realizes that she was the one who choked her sister in her sleep and poured hot water in Antonio's bath and the devil is using her to harm Antonio. To protect him, she tries to slit her own throat, but the devil prevents it. Instead, it begins to torture her. Eventually, it grips her body tightly, covering her mouth and choking her. 
It's now Sunday midnight, June 15, 1991. The detective and his team are horrified as they witness Veronica's body contort in pain, then suddenly collapse. They call for medical assistance for Veronica, who has passed out on the ground. Outside, their mother anxiously waits for Veronica and breaks down in tears when she sees her daughter in a horrifying state. Inside the house, the detective investigates and finds a photo of Veronica. As he reaches for it, he feels the heat radiating from it, and it begins to burn. Suddenly, the police receive a call informing them that Veronica is dead. With Veronica becoming the vessel for the evil creature, it vanishes from the world. The detective documents the incident, marking it as the first paranormal police report in Spain. Ultimately, the story remains a mystery, completely inexplicable to this day. The movie is based on a real story, and to this day, it remains unexplained. Thank you for watching.